Hey guys, Carlo Customs here, back again with another showcase video, but this time I have Scarecrow, Joker, Batman, Harley Quinn, Poison Ivy, and Killer Croc, my first officially custom Lego Big Fig, by the way, and all in honor for my showcase of the 2009's Batman Arkham Asylum. So yeah, this is a game that I've been playing for years and years and years on end, Batman Arkham Asylum. Even the remastered edition that came out earlier last, I mean later last year. But the main reason I wanted to make this is because after playing uh, the remastered uh, about a few weeks ago, it just made me really realize how, you know, I can take my talent that I've been using for like over a year and finally apply it to something that I've been loving for years. So yeah, that's exactly what I did here. And without further ado, let's get started. So to start it off here, we have probably one of the most unfortunately um, underwhelming characters of the showcase, and that's just saying it honestly. But anyways, here we have Batman, and of course this is the Batman that was first ever introduced to the Arkham series, his uh, design type, I guess you could say. And uh, he looks uh, really nice, I really like how he came out, he came out looking really accurate in my opinion. I started on this guy earlier within this month, but that's all I can really say about like making him. Uh, so to go over a few things, like he's totally he's a completely in this light gray uh, attire with some uh, black boots, you know, black undies and gloves, of course, and his black bat symbol from the first game that everybody knows. And yeah, that's all really has to be said about that. You know, a few gray lines like here and there. And uh, actually, if we remove everything here, oh, I guess you could might as well start by removing this. So uh, here's the belt I use. It's one of the new Lego Batman movie belts. It's actually shaped pretty like identical to uh, the way he has it in the actual game. And uh, this is a sculpted on Nub because uh, I was trying to make it so it can like house uh, uh, one of his gadgets, but I sort of didn't know what to use. I was running low on time So uh, he sort of has this stud that's sort of available if I ever come to making something that can be equipped That could be attached to it. So that's enough of that and uh, here are the boot details So as you can see here is his painted on uh, Underwear I guess you could say that wraps all the way from the top to uh, the bottom of the waist piece and there are the green lines with a few dots here and there. And uh, the painted boot details do indeed wrap all the way around. So you can see that little gray line. And yeah, really all has to be said for him. And uh, also, if we go back to the main uh, figure himself, you can see that uh, this is what the body is uh, completely made of, but like completely unstripped. And uh, might as well just put everything together here. So this is Batman when he completely has all of his gadgets and you know like fighting uh, t uh, uh, tech and equipment separated from him. If you want to look at him like that. And uh, I should mention that this cape is a cape madness uh, cape that I found. Is a was completely made for Batman himself. And you can get a better look at his arm detail, mainly nothing on the back because I have really no plans to have his cape not on. And uh, so yeah, that's what it looks like. And I just use a sanded down uh, cowl, like one of those standard 2012 cowls, but slightly sanded. And I painted in some cheekbones on a regular like uh, Batman head and gave him the realistic eyes with some black and white paint. So yeah, that is all that really has to be said about Batman himself. But now here can I show you some of his gadgets. Okay, so this is what he looks like when he's equipped with this explosive gel. Easily one of the most useful items in the game. And uh, you can use this to uh, set up like distractions, explode walls or floors or any sort of surfaces in the asylum. Or you can use it to uh, as a takedown on enemies. And uh, yeah, so there's nothing really much to it. It's a mini Star Wars blaster that has the scope and back to, like slightly cut off. And uh, you can see that uh, the nozzle right here, it has like a tiny little cylinder piece that was glued over here. So a little, so you, it sort of looks like that. And there's a painted off like ejection port, like a bullet hole, I guess you could say. And uh, here is uh, the tube that contains the explosive uh, liquids that is the explosive gel. So yeah, that has to be said about the uh, explosive gel. And uh, the next weapon in mind is his uh, grapple gun slash bat claw, because in the game they're considered the same weapon. Uh, the bat claw is considered an attachment. So this is what it looks like, you know, I glued a handle to this uh, to these two like stud pieces. 
and it came off like this, and I painted the silver on that. And then I glued this to, uh, I believe it's like a Creo, a like gun piece that was carved in a certain way. And uh, the little uh, grappling hook was sculpted on and painted in silver. And uh, yeah, so here's another few good looks. And here are some like grips. Those are like the gray lines. And uh, and finally, we have his battering. All right, so this is what he looks like with the battering. So yeah, it's just regular battering, uh, cut and shaved to size, and painted in metallic, in metallic blue. And yeah, so this has gone on a little too long. I tried to tie myself on this, but yeah, that's Batman. And next in line, we have Poison Ivy herself. And uh, with a, it, she took a long time to make, and was kind of frustrating to make a little bit too at that. So the first to go over, her uh, torso had to be shaved down because I didn't have an area like her torso in dark red at the time. And honestly, this works just the same, just as well. And uh, she had to be painted in several layers of this like lime green color that you're seeing right here. And also, I had to sculpt out her hair so it could look like semi, like as accurate as I could get it from the one that she wears in the game. So to go over the hair first because it's probably like the most like innovative and took the most uh, out of me to do. So it was sculpted over a slightly modified original Poison Ivy hair from the 2007 Bat uh, Arkham Asylum, which is actually kind of funny how making an Arkham Asylum like thing using an Arkham Asylum set thing. All right, so. I can't attach it to her head, like, the head and hair can be detached, but, like, they're so, like, cemented in there because of, like, the paint and, like, how, like, uh, chunky it is. The paint's not, like, that chunky, I meant, like, uh, how it, like, sort of cemented itself. It's weird to explain, but, yeah. And you also notice that she has these sort of, like, green, like, viney pieces coming off on the sides of her face and her whole entire body. You can see on her legs, on her arms, so you can see they're under there, too. And also, if you want to see on her other arm, because, ah, alright, so there's her other, other arm, you know, it's just, it's there, it's prominent, you can see it, and uh, there are her painted toenails, and uh, more of the same pattern on this other side, and also, you have her grass thaw, I guess you could call it, and it sort of extends on the back. Oh yeah, and I should mention, uh, on the back, there is her, uh, the Arkham logo painted on, and I couldn't paint Arkham because it's too meticulous and small, and yeah, and, uh, to finalize the figure, I gave her a little, uh, vibe piece, so yeah, that's Poison Ivy, so yeah, now let's move on to the next minifigure. Okay, so here we have the man himself, Joker, reprised his role as Mark Hamill, and Kevin Conroy reprised his role as Batman, as I forgot to say it earlier. But anyways, to get down the main ingredient of this guy, this guy was solid pinstripes, and they were annoying as all living hell. I, I even had to get them going on the sides of the arms, I mean the sides of the torso, all on the back on all four sides of each legs, and they had to curve around each arm, and they all ha they had to look symmetrical on both sides of the arms, and also alongside of that with all the detail on the front of his torso, including his collar that has different pinstripe designs going upwards, and his bow tie, and his under orange shirt with his little silver buttons that had to go on his wrists and everything. And yeah, you know, just like this guy was so difficult, but he came out looking cool in the long run. So you can already get a good look at what he looks like. So anyways, to go in more detail, uh, here is his, uh, here's a uh, gold chain that he has going from, uh, his shirt to his pocket. And uh, down his legs, you can see there's like a little patch right there on his knee area, I guess you could call it. And, uh, on his legs, I sort of have to get in here, you can see that. Uh, it continues the same like sort of sock design that the other leg has and it goes on like uh four sides and it just leads to his legs and yeah not really much i could say about the joker and uh his face was a modified original joker head and his hair is a green is a painted green uh doctor who hair piece which was my original plan for this hair piece and yeah I th really think he came out looking good. I really like this character and this portrayal of Joker, even to the point where they stopped using him in the Arkham series. And if you don't know why he was stopped used in the Arkham series, then, like, where, where have you been, man? It's been five years. <laughs> but anyways, yeah. And here we have the Jester herself, Harley Quinn. And, uh, she's looking pretty scandalous, if you ask me. But anyway, starting off with Harley Quinn, she was probably, once again, one of the hardest minifigures to make in the showcase because of her own complexities and just her own annoyances as a whole. 
So uh, to start off with one of those, I had to paint uh, skin color, like mix, cause like mixing to make skin color with like paint to match Lego skin color is super annoying. You will not believe how annoying it is. And then also I had to sculpt on her hair and her hat and her ponytails that hang off to the side that had to be like double sculpted, which was like, cause like waiting for this stuff to dry is so irritating cause you know, you just want to get done with it and like move on. But yeah, I waited for that, and then I painted it in the necessary colors that you see here. And uh, her face is just a regular, like, Harley Quinzel-like hair that you've been seeing recently. So basically, like, this hair piece. Uh, the, the, I mean, this head piece, I meant to say. And, uh, you know, her arms are simple. You, can, you have the cuffs, and also with, like, the little sleeves that lead to her black wristbands. Same on the other side, too. And uh, the insides of them are just not really all that exciting, and it's just the same for the other arm, too. So, yeah. And also, this torso had to be shaved out because I don't own an area like curved torso of this. So, uh, you know, I'm just working with what my, I got. And then also, uh, since I didn't have any white uh, cloth piece, pieces with me, uh, this whole entire skirt was made from electrical tape, and that's what it looks like now. And, uh, let's go to her body, and her body is, like, where, like, the most of, uh, like, the, the, like, the character comes out, like, I mean, the torso. So you can see that she has this, uh, annoying, uh, gray, uh, lines that go through, uh, all, like, the red vest. They're also covered up by the black straps that also end at the back. And, uh, I should mention that she's also wearing, like, a black necktie, or, like, a black necklace. And, uh, she has a 3D, uh, cut from, uh, Green Stuff, uh, Warden's card right there, so that's pretty interesting. And she has multicolored bra, and, uh, also I should mention that the sleeves are also multicolored, and so are the boots. And so they mix off in red and, uh, b blue each time. So that's what the detail looks like all around. So she just basically has these, like, uh, pretty similar detail equivalent on each side, just in different colors. And, yeah. So that's all that really has to be said about Harley Quinn. I gave her a simple gun, and I painted, uh, like, the little, I guess you could say, bullet ejection port. Yeah, the ejection port, uh, silver. And, yeah, that's all I really did for her. So that's Harley, and without further ado, let's move on to our next minifigure. So here we have the complete freak himself, Scarecrow. And Scarecrow in the game is just so freaking, like, haunting. I mean, like, when you first see him, when you first enter the dream world, you're just so, like, in awe of, like, how big he is and, like, how much damage you think he'll do. And the first time that I always uh, got caught by him, I was, like, so like, freaking scared and mad at the same time. But anyways, on to what I did to make the figure. It was actually pretty easy to throw together and actually put hard in his own ways, like, uh, the repetitivity of, like, having to do like these uh bands around his arms and make them semi-symmetrical of what you see on the other arm and also making uh this gauntlet and uh how it looks with like the 3d bits here uh for some uh the tubes that can that uh contain uh some of the uh venom uh, like the toxin that he releases with his claw hand and you can see how, what I did with the claw hand. I made sure to paint them in the orange color you see here to show uh, like that there's toxin and the syringes on his hand. And yeah, that's all that has to be said about his toxins. His pants are pretty simple. I just uh, painted them in brown. And there's like all sorts of different stitch marks on them. You can see them all the way around. Sorry, I tipped the camera a little bit. So you can see uh, all the certain types of stitch marks. And they even go on the inside of the leg there. And yeah, that's all that really has to be said about the stitch, stitch marks. His boots are pretty uh, plain. They're just basically uh, regular brown boots. That's all, all that really has to be said. And uh, he has a little rope like going around his waist section. And it ends off on the back too. And if you want to get a better look at that, there it is. So you can see where the outlines of the rope are around his waist section. And here's a little better look at the arm if you want it. And yeah. And, uh, for some of the rope that's around his neck, I used actual strands of, uh, like, straw rope that I got from my dad to help me put this, uh, together. So I glued that. It was hardened with glue, and then it was glued onto the body afterwards. This is a 3D cloth piece with some st more stitch markings. And, uh, here is his body, if you want to get a better look at it, so you can, uh, see all, like, the outlines of his ribs, because he is a scrawny man in the game. And I also made sure to add, uh, to shave down the sides to also show his scrawniness. 
and uh, his, uh, his hood is actually a uh, Cape Madness hood, I believe, and uh, yeah, uh, and then it also has its all sorts of uh, stitch marks too. Alright, so this is what he looks like with his head disassembled from uh, that cloth piece. And as you can see, there's some paint exposed, which is kind of embarrassing now that I think about it. But it's not that too big of a deal because there is never going to be a point where I'm going to display him without his hood. So that's always good. And yeah, it's good in the hood, I guess you could say. Sorry for the cheesiness, but yeah. That has to do it for a Scarecrow, one of my favorite figures from this game, and it's so cool that we got to see him again nearly like six years later to make his epic return in Batman Arkham Knight, which I hope that I can someday find a ticket upon myself to update. Alright, so here we have the monster himself, Killer Croc, finally translated into Lego form. And after seeing the final, like, uh, final, like, thing, if you look at the final project, looking at everything that I've done, I just feel so accomplished that I can finally have this guy as my display. And, uh, this also marks the first official, uh, big fig that I've ever customized. But enough talking about that, that, let's go into detail about this figure. So, uh, like every, there's a lot of sculpting bits about him. His gauntlets were sculpted, and also his uh, collar was uh, sculpted, his shock collar, and uh, some spikes on the back of his elbows and his back, and his uh, spine, uh, like uh, spikes were also sculpted on, and also the rope going around his entire pants were sculpted, uh, the shackles on his uh, ankles are sculpted on, and uh, yeah. And also, it's also worth mentioning that I use some electrical tape in certain areas. So, like, there's, like, a few paddings around his, uh, uh, gauntlets, along with, like, the string around his gauntlets. So, like, you know, this, like, sort of, like, uh, these straps, these are, uh, like, 3D, like, uh, electrical tape. And, uh, you know, just added along his claws here and there, along with some, uh, beige colors, because his, uh, skin gets more beige the more it gets closer to his, like, uh, feet and hands near his, uh, nails area. And, you know, like, uh, ankles are painted silver, thought I might as well add that. And, uh, yeah. And also, you can see, like, uh, the pattern of his, uh, rough, like, uh, scales on his chest and some parts of his arms. So, yeah, that came out looking pretty cool. And, uh, the top of his head has, like, uh, some, like, devilish looking, uh, oops, sorry. Has some, uh, scale patterns going on the back there. And, yeah. Oh, <laughs> let me, like, get this guy back on. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool. And also, you may be also able to uh, see that uh, he has some actual, like, official, like, chain pieces hanging from his collar, hanging from the back of his arms, and, uh, you know, hanging on the back of his ankle shackles as well. And so, yeah, and also he has just his orange uh, pant, jumpsuit pants that are also weathered in some uh, blacks and some browns. So, yeah. That is it, guys, for my Batman Arkham Asylum Showcase. I thoroughly hope you guys enjoyed, because these figures do take insanely long to make. Without further ado, let's wrap this thing up. So that is it, guys, for my Batman Arkham Asylum video. I thoroughly hope you guys enjoyed. These figures took insanely long to make. They took most of the month for me to make, and I'm kind of last minute it right now just to push it out before the end of January, which was my goal, and hopefully by the time you're seeing this, I've achieved that goal. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Follow me on Instagram where you can find BTS uh, pics of certain videos sometimes, or maybe um, uh, some progress on figures that are months, months away from probably being shown here on YouTube. So yeah, with that, I'll see you guys in the next one, and goodbye.